Ah yes, it's wedding photography. One of the most stress-free photographing endeavors you can ever imagine, right? No, of course I'm kidding. But in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some retouching and toning you can do in Photoshop slash Camera Raw to your wedding photos to deliver amazing wedding photos to your clients. We're going to use this wedding photo and I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks that I use to retouch my wedding photos quickly and with what I think are pretty good results. So follow this tutorial and let's check it out. So it all starts here with a raw file. I actually have this file here that I was going to use for this tutorial, but then I decided to do a photo that was a little more tricky. This was a photo during the bride and groom's first dance. It is a raw file. That's very, very important. I hope you're shooting your weddings in raw. Raw is just better. It affords you so much more ability to retouch and push and pull light and color and tone and everything. It's so good. It's so great. It's so awesome. I can't say enough great things about raw. If you have a DSLR that can shoot raw by... Uh, Please do. That's what I'm trying to say. Please do. So we have a raw file right here straight out of the camera. I am going to hit Command or Control R to open it up in Camera Raw. And we're going to go ahead and uh, begin the kind of retouching process of this photo. So before we do anything as far as the light, because you can see uh, it's a little underexposed, a bit underexposed. I had a light up here in the balcony firing, a big strobe head firing down so we could get a cool, uh, just kind of a nice back rim light on them as they danced around. Everything else is ambient. I had no flash on my camera. Uh, I don't even put a flash on my camera when I'm shooting weddings. In fact, I don't really like on-camera flash for the most part. So what we want to do is this image is a bit heavy and uh, orangey, warm. It's too warm. I want this to be cold and steely and dramatic uh, like a good ballroom dance should be, at least in my mind. So I'm going to begin by shifting the temperature here to the left uh, until it's pretty blue. So let's go, uh, let's go about 3,500, something like that looks good. So I'm going to leave it at 3,500 even, and I'm also going to enhance the purples a little bit by just, just giving a splash of tint in there. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to bump the entire exposure of the image by just dragging this uh, to the right here. So I'm going to go like, I don't know, 1.80 is cool. You can see we're getting a little bit of noise in there. So I shot at ISO 800. Um, so we bump it up almost two full stops. You're going to see some noise. Don't worry about that right now. Um, a lot of times uh, the noise can be a kind of a cool effect in the image as well. Uh, we're going to boost the contrast as well. Typically I don't like to boost the contrast here, but I'm going to in this case. Um, so I'm going to boost it to yeah, let's go plus 20, something that's easy to remember. Uh, and I'm going to pop the highlights as well. So I'm going to push the highlights up to about plus 10. Um, I'm going to boost the shadows as well until it looks good. You know what? Right there. Plus 25, that looks good. Uh, we'll also go to the whites and we'll drag them up a little bit. Maybe right about there. I'm just looking to make sure I don't blow out my light entirely. I kind of like the fact that the white uh, that the the white light looks a bit blue as well. Uh, we can really we got a lot of crazy color going on down here. We're gonna handle that in a second. Hang with me. Uh, we're gonna drag the blacks up as well. So we're gonna drag. Uh, yeah, right around there. Right around 25 also looks good. Um, so a couple things uh, that I would potentially consider changing or trying to alter in Photoshop. One, uh, the videographer, I would try to dump him. Uh, and also, there's a girl sitting right here in the front row, just very engaged on her cell phone. Um, other than that, I kind of like the photo. Um, so uh, we're not going to cover that stuff here. We're just going to cover the color and the tone and the sharpening and stuff like that that I do here in Camera Raw that you can do pretty quickly. Um, and also, now that we've infused all this color, I am going to bump the vibrance as well. I want this to look crazy colorful and again I can come in and we're going to come in a little bit later with the hue saturation adjustments, hue saturation brightness um, and we're going to adjust because we've got a lot of purple and blue here in the foreground. We'll probably knock some of that down. But we'll take care of that in a moment. Now let's jump right over here into the tone curve which is the second tab. We have the parametric tab here. We're not going to use that. That's not a very useful curve. I don't like it very much. The point curve is much, much more useful and much, much more powerful. So we're going to begin by dragging the bottom point here up. We're just going to drag it straight up, keep it all the way pressed against the left-hand side, and then I'm going to click to add another point, and I'm going to drag that back about where the original point was. Now you can see this kind of muddies the whole image. It darkens it a bit. It's darkening it because this whole part of the new curve line is below that faint original curve. Anything beneath that, you can see it's just going to infuse the image with darkness. We don't like that. So what I want to do is I want to drag this back to its original uh, position and maybe I'll just throw a point there just a little bit higher so you can see the curve now sort of bends above the original point which means it's going to just gracefully brighten uh, the entire image. I actually kind of dig that uh, a bit. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll darken this down just a little bit. 
that's going to kind of knock down the brightness of my big flash up here in the balcony. Something like that. That looks pretty cool. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to choose red from the channel drop down menu. And I'm going to basically create a simple S curve. I, by doing that, I'm going to drag down here. This is going to add a, a little, just a drip or two of cyan to the shadowy parts of the image. And then when I pull up here, it's going to add just a kiss of red to the brighter parts of the image, just like so. We're going to go to the green channel now. And in the green channel, I want to kind of mess things up a little bit, almost make it a lot like the RGB uh, curve line out here, but not quite. We're gonna drag the bottom portion up. I wanna pour some green into my shadows, and then I'm gonna drag this dot back into like magenta territory. Green is up here, magenta is down here, magenta is the opposite of green. So we're gonna pull it through like that, and then I'm gonna just try to kind of pull this back um, so my curve is fairly close to its original placement. Maybe a little above the original line, just so we have a little bit of green filtering into some of the brighter parts of the image. So basically what we've done is we've filled our shadows with green. Looks pretty cool. I can again add a little bit of magenta to the highlights just by pulling that dot down. You can see it's making like my entire light now is essentially purple. If I pull it the other way, the light is gonna be green. So we just want to subtle, very, very subtle. We're just gonna make it a very subtle bluish purplish effect up there. Now we're gonna go channel blue and choose the blue adjustment layer. And here again, we're gonna do another very similar to what we just did, uh, S curve. We're gonna pull down a little bit. Now that's gonna actually add yellow because yellow is the opposite of blue. So it's gonna add yellow to the shadowy parts of the image. And then we pull up here and that's gonna add blue uh, to the highlight portions of our image. So the colors are looking super crazy right now. There's way more color than we want, um, but I kind of like the overall ratio of like red and yellow to the blues and magentas that we have going on in the image. I like that. I like the blue that we have in the light. So now it's a matter of adjusting saturation and correcting what needs to be corrected. We can adjust the saturation by going over to the hue saturation slash grayscale tab right there. It's kind of like the multi uh, gradient looking tab. We're going to start with hue um, and under hue, I want to push some of the colors around. So you can see I can drag the reds this way, which makes any of the reds in the image more pink. You can see all that wall is basically pink or I can push it the other way and make the reds more orange. I think orange kind of fits in as a little bit closer to what we're, uh, what we're kind of the effect that we want. It contrasts a little bit more. So the colors, I guess, aren't as close. It's a little bit more of a contrast with the with the blue. So I kind of want the reds on this back wall to be a bit more orange. So I'm gonna push that up. Let's just go like plus 25, plus 26, whatever. Uh, and then oranges, I'm gonna push them more toward yellow. So you can see the walls becoming more yellow as opposed to being more red when I go that way. So I'm gonna push the oranges in the direction of yellow. Uh, somewhere right around there, that looks good. Uh, so that's plus 14 for those of you keeping score at home. And then the yellows, I can push the yellows to be more green or I can push them to be more orange. There really aren't many yellows in this shot. You can see up here in the bridal suite room uh, overlooking the dance floor, uh, that's kind of being affected. So let's just make that a little bit more orange, uh, add a little bit of richness to that up there, kind of help it blend in with the wall. So we're gonna make the yellows a little bit more orange. About negative 15 looks good. Uh, greens, we're gonna leave that at zero. There's not a ton of green in the image. Aqua, we'll also leave at zero. Now, blue, I want to push the blue a little bit more toward the purple. So let's do something right about there. I landed on 30. That looks good. Now we really have a concentration of purple in the foreground. Again, don't freak out. We're going to adjust it here. We haven't gotten a saturation yet. And the purples, we can push those to be very pink. You can see what that did to the wall up here, how it made that very pink. Or we can push them to being very blue, which is kind of crazy looking. Um, but we, we have the option. Um, now, in order to help sort of meet the blues in the middle, remember we pushed the blues toward purple. I'm actually going to pull the purples back toward blue as well. So I'm going to pull them back somewhere right around there. That looks good. So you're, we're just sort of helping to conjoin the blues and uh, the purples. And then the magentas, any kind of like deep magenta or red, uh, that's going to be pulled closer to purple as well. So let's just pull that to around negative 30, something like that. Now, here's where things really start to get toned down in the saturation panel. We're not going to mess with reds, oranges, yellows, greens. We're going to play with our aquas, our blues, and purples, and a little bit with magenta. So we're going to do some drastic changes. First thing we do, we're going to take aqua, we're gonna knock it down quite a bit, maybe around negative 30. Blues, we're going to pull that even further. We're going to go, let's try negative 45. And the purple also, we're going to go about negative 40 ish. Let's go negative 40. I don't want to completely wash all the color out. And then magenta, we're also going to go about negative 30. So you can see it almost looks borderline black and white. In fact, I'm going to kick a little bit of that color back into there, uh, like so. Now, part of the reason that it's looking like such a drastic change is because it was so colorful before your eyes began to get accustomed to the 
insane intensity of that color. Not necessarily a good thing, but when people look at this photo for the first time, you're going to say, hey, wow, that's a cool wedding photo. The colors look great or whatever um, because you didn't see what we saw before. Now, we're going to add a little bit more color to the highlights and shadows by using the split toning tab here. And we're going to drag, uh, we're going to drag in a little bit of uh, maybe some blues to the highlights. This is going to really concentrate some blue, especially up here in the light. So we're going to increase the saturation maybe to about 10. You can see it re really just added this whole blue uh, glow over the whole image. We're not going to toy around with the balance much. Um, now the shadows, we're going to try to add like a deep magenta purpley color to. Uh, maybe actually deep magenta red, I should say almost hot pink, imagine. Uh, and we're going to say about a number 10 when it comes to saturation. So you can see we filtered in very... Um, very specifically, very selectively, I should say, we filtered back in some of that color that we got rid of. And split toning really allows us to do that pretty effectively. So now we're going to go to the lens correction tab and we're just going to tick on enable lens profile corrections. Uh, Camera Raw essentially uses the metadata attached to your raw image or JPEG and is able to tell you, hey, look, this was shot in a Canon with the 2470 f2.8L lens. Um, I also know that it was shot at f2.8 and it was at 24 millimeters. So Canon, or excuse me, Camera Raw knows all of that and it's able to say, all right, well, here are the uh, changes you need to make. And you can see it sort of like corrects some of the crazy vignetting and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, I don't know that I like that much vignetting. I kind of like some of the darker vignetting. It sort of draws the eye inward. I don't want to go with like a crazy 1990s, you know, Olin Mills, ridiculous, um, dark edged vignette or anything. And then for the distortion, I, yeah, I sort of want to stretch the image out. The more I stretch the image out, the more bigness I infuse into the image. And for this sort of dramatic styled shot, I want bigness. I want it to look legit. I want it to look huge. So that's really cool. All right. So now that we've done that, we're going to flip back over to the detail tab where we can then infuse some sharpening. Now in order to sharpen, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on them because I want to keep a keen eye on the grain. Remember this was shot at ISO 800. So there's a little bit of grain in there. We're going to increase the sharpening. Now, as we increase the sharpening, the grain becomes more pronounced because we're sharpening the grain along with everything else. So we can do a few things. We can reduce the detail here in the sharpening area, or we can increase the luminance noise reduction. I'm actually going to do a combination of both. So I'm going to reduce detail. Uh, that does a little bit, not quite as much as I wanted. So I'm going to increase the sharpening a little bit more, and then I'm also going to increase the luminance noise reduction. You don't want to increase it too much because you kind of lose all detail, and that looks awful. It looks like a, uh, you know, a CD security camera for a local convenience store. We don't want that. So like 15 on the luminance noise reduction scale is great. There we go. We've added a bit of sharpness, really just pop the image. And I'm going to double click the hand here. It's going to zoom my image back out so it fits in my screen. And lastly, we can really just grab the crop tool and go ahead and tilt this image a little bit. So just try to level it off just a smidgen, something like so commit that change and there we go. Just like that, we've taken our wedding photo. Oh, and by the way, if you want to open it in Photoshop to continue editing or anything like that, go ahead and hit open image. If you just want to save your changes, hit the done button and that's going to bring us back to camera raw or not camera raw, what am I thinking? Back to the Adobe bridge and you can see what we have. It's actually remarkably close to the one that I did just before. Um, so there is our image and all the settings have been saved. We didn't open it in Photoshop. This is the PSD behind me that's open in Photoshop, but that's it. You have toned, you have edited, you've adjusted the exposure, sharpened, color corrected, infused a photo with color, and you saw how dark that photo was. It was about two stops underexposed because I really wanted to freeze the motion. I wanted to shoot at a fast enough shutter speed that I wouldn't get a blurry photo. So I had to intentionally underexpose even with my light. Um, and I got great light. I love the way it turned out. And that's it. You've learned how to tone and adjust a photo, a wedding photo, with Photoshop's Camera Raw Editor. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you head over to the website. That's www.tutvid.com. There's a link to it down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later.